Of course, not everyone racked up such honors. Honors can be slow in coming. Take, for example, the case of the men aboard one patrol boat out in the Gulf of Mexico escorting a ship called the Robert E. Lee in 1942. Until 2001, we had their story wrong. You see, a German U-boat attacked the ship they were protecting, escorting. The patrolmen fought back with explosives, but they were never sure if they got the Germans. Two days later, a plane dropped charges on a German sub, and that crew got the credit for sinking U-166. But now, the full story can finally be laid to rest. Sixty years after it went down, marine archaeologists have found U-166. Five thousand feet of dark salt water is a cold tomb. Even with the best array of sensors and computer enhancements, this ghost is barely visible. There it is, just a grainy shadow of what was once an evil menace. It's appropriate that after 50 years we still have only a peak. Its victims may not have gotten even that. A German Unterseeboot, the high-tech stealth fighter of the Second World War. I, I think my first reaction was disbelief because I saw it and it was supposed to have been another wreck that we that had been it had previously been identified as a freighter, a, a very large freighter, about a seven thousand ton freighter. And when I first saw the image, I'm like, you know, it's kind of like that doesn't look right. The chance of us actually finding it was a long shot. Robert and, uh, Church and Dan Warren are marine archaeologists with C and C Technologies. <laughs> The Lafayette Company is a leader in underwater mapping for oil companies who want to know what's on the sea floor. Shell and British Petroleum wanted to know if the bottom of the Gulf near the mouth of the Mississippi was clear for a pipeline. C&C sent down this probe, their best remote scanner. Actually, uh, Dan and I were kidding each other that, that evening that we did see these images on the sonar first. Was uh, I had to leave early, and Dan was going to look through the data, and, and he was around with me saying, you know, I'm going I'm to see this U-boat when you walk out of here, give you a call tonight, and you're going to have to come running back up here to the office. And that's almost exactly what happened, except he did call me, but I didn't believe him. And then the next morning when I came into work, I had an image sitting there that, I mean, anyone else could have looked at that image and said, okay, it's a sonar contact. But it, it had the right, the right shape for a U-boat. I'm looking actually for the report of the German captain for nearly 40 years, C.J. Christ of Homa has amassed a huge personal collection of microfilm, Nazi naval records, commercial shipping logs, nearly all there is to know about America's other war in the Gulf, the one Hitler launched from France. You can see UN-66 was a, a large uh, submarine, 252 feet long, 22 feet wide, and uh, they were submerged along the route of the Robert E. Lee. The Robert E. Lee was a commercial freighter pressed into American war service. It was carrying 268 passengers from Trinidad to New Orleans when its military escort may have made a grave mistake. Ever since the day before, when the Robert E. Lee tried to get into Tampa, uh, the Robert E. Lee has been using their radio, and so has their escort been using their radio, asking for a pilot to get into the harbor, than being refused a pilot or not available. And then the, uh, the Robert E. Lee called their escort and said, will you now escort me to New Orleans? And the escort answers back, well, I'll have to call the headquarters and get permission. So then they call headquarters, headquarters calls back and says, you have permission. So the PC-566, the escort, says, follow me to New Orleans. And Robert E. Lee says, okay, we'll follow you to New Orleans. You know, all of this going on, on the 500 meter or 600 meter band that all the U-boats listened to. In a flash, U-166 made its run and pulled the trigger. And so when he sighted the Robert E. Lee, I'm sure he started uh, into the attack position. And when his range and bearing and torpedo depth and so forth was right in his estimation, he said, Los, and phew, the fighter fell up here. The captain of the Robert E. Lee's military escort was eventually reprimanded. It wasn't known at the time that he is the one who did in U-166. 
he realizes that the submarine, the captain, is not looking at him or looking around for anything. He is watching the Robert E. Lee sink. So he goes around and comes up on the, on the uh, submarine, and he puts out five depth charges, two of which are fired from the deck, the foredeck, and three of which are rolled off the stern. The pattern of wreckage of the German boat on the sea floor indicates it was killed by a depth charge I'm that very back. day. And by this time, 407 people are in the water. And he opts to start picking up survivors rather than make another run. And we started to cross the sea floor, and it, it, it took a little while. And the very first thing we come to is all of a sudden this wall of iron. And we didn't know initially what we were looking at until the ROV pilot started panning up. And then we realized what we're looking at is the side of the conning tower. And you can just see the, the lip of the conning tower. And now we've moved around to the front of the conning tower. And you can see all that splash guard and everything is in great shape. But right there in the center, that's where, where the periscope would come up. Here's the aft portion of the conning tower. This is the railing that goes around what they call the vendor garden, which is, uh, and there's the 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun there on that on that vendor garden. Now there is a lot of suspension in the water, as you can see, and a lot of uh, plankton. So it wasn't the, probably the best for, for filming, but it was good enough for what we needed to do, and that was to go down and confirm that this was a, a 9C German U-boat in the U-166. In the year they plied the Gulf, 17 U-boats sank 56 ships. In our search for lost Louisiana, we've always found the simple stories to be the most poignant. 